Hey everybody, it's How To Tuesday, and if you are like so many anglers in the state of Florida, you are after the tarpon, and the tarpon is a special fish. It's kind of a dinosaur. It is a dinosaur, and it's really important that we take care of these fish, and there are actually re regulations in place that prohibit you from taking them out of the water. So how would you know how big this tarpon is? For a lot of people, a tarpon is going to be the largest fish you've ever caught. You get a picture of it, and the first question anybody's going to ask is, how big is that fish? For other people, maybe it's close to a record, or maybe you're just interested in how big it is because maybe it's your own personal best. I have an expert here who is going to go through the equation for figuring out how big your tarpon is if you're lucky enough to catch one and get it boat side. And if you are, let's, we're also going to talk about ways that you can do this quickly and release them unharmed. Mike Larkin, you're with us today. How are you, man? Good, good. How are you, Tom? I'm doing fantastic. Have you had a chance to get out there and catch a few tarpon this year? Yeah, I got one last Sunday, actually, right in on. Miami. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. But, but an 80-pounder. Nice. So. <laughs> nice. So what we're going to talk about today, um, if you haven't joined us for the other podcast that Mike has been on, he's talked about uh, tarpon history and bonefish history. Very interesting podcast. Um, today, we're going to talk about specifically how to uh, determine a, a, an estimated weight for these fish without doing them any harm. So Mike, take it over. How do you how do you suggest doing that? Yeah, yeah. I guess beginning, you know, they're obviously tarpon are very large fish. You know, and it, and also if you just take the length, you know, you don't, you're not, you're not capturing the whole story, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you're taking, you know, you're taking a one dimensional measurement of a three dimensional object. So that, that girth has a huge impact on the weight of the animal. Whereas I feel like, like trout, you know, you can get away with a 16 inch trout, 17 inch trout, you know, the girth doesn't change a whole lot. Um, but anyway, so, um, so what I'm going to go to now is, um, I'm going to share my screen here. Okay. And make sure and a lot of people you. just listen to this podcast too. So while you're doing this, make sure that you're you're Explain it. Uh, explaining it if you could, please. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people know the what's it's actually known as the Woods equation. In 1924, um, there was an equation where they, which is really it was really quite clever to estimate fish weight. And it's probably a lot of people have heard of it. Weight equals girth squared times fourth length divided by 800. Mm -hmm. And really the, but the, the, the research that went behind that, it was really based on putting two cones together. So like a, like a football shaped fish, like a bone fish, like a, like a tuna, it works really quite works well for those. In fact, I tried to develop my own equation for bone fish, but I was only getting about 5% or less more accurate. So to me, it didn't make sense to go all the work of developing a, a giant complicated equation when, when the woods equation works really well for, for, for football shaped fish but what but for but where you where you it doesn't work that well is, is tarpon so tarpon you know they're kind of you know compressed in the sides and, and they don't have to fit that football shape as well as a tuna or a bonefish does so uh some some working with my colleagues at university of miami came up with a their own weight estimate specifically for tarpon and they found um so um to get into it real quick we had a large database had, had over a thousand um, samples of tarpon where we knew the weight, we knew the fork length, and we knew the girth. Mm -hmm. We got those from IGFA, we got those from taxi armies, we got those from the Florida Fish and Wildlife, from different research projects. In Mexico, there was a huge um, uh, kill tournament in Mexico, went on for years, where they came in, they got the fork length, they got the girth, they got the weight. So a huge database to work with, to really develop a, a specific uh, tarpon, and a specific equation for estimating the weight of tarpon. And what they found is actually this new estimate can be much, it's much more accurate than the, than that old Woods equation. In fact, it, you can, if you use, use the old Woods equation, you could underestimate your tarpon weight by as much as 15%. Right on. Now, you got people's attention now. If you can get, everybody wants the fish to be as big as possible. So using the Woods equation, you might be underestimating by 15%. So we're, yeah, we're all it. ears now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now there is a lot of uh, variance. I know the time we talked before, you were saying, you know, what if you just subtract, do the Woods equation and subtract ten percent? But, but the problem is there is a lot of variability. Think of like a scatter plot. So you could be, you could estimate as much as 
15%, but there are cases where you can Woods equation, you only underestimate by 5% or 6%. So there is some variability there. I don't know if that's because of a measurement error or whatever, but there's always some error with your measurements when always, when you have a large database like that. So, so really then now again, would get into what the equation looks like. Now, the problem is it, it is quite complicated. So I'm gonna go to my next, next slide here. So, so here, uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, you're not going to do this on a, um, you're not going to do this on a, on a boat. So weight equals two point eight. See this large equation. I'm kind of showing with my mouse here. Yeah. Um, then there's seven times square square times four clank. So it's it's brutal, but it is accurate. So it is brutal though. But um, my colleagues at University of Miami developed. I think it's similar to a slide rule. I think slide rules were before my time, so I'm not really familiar with slide rules. I don't know, I don't know if you use slide rules a lot of time. Uh, well, <laughs> I was supposed to. <laughs> I was supposed to use them, and and uh, I, I just kind of glanced over at somebody else's paper uh, for the most part. <laughs> gotcha. But what I'm showing you here at, at the bottom here is a, you know, instead of being out in the water, um, you know, and trying to estimate, you know, trying to do that calculation in your head, but are you always – come back and do it. But you know, if you get a good estimate of the girth and we, we got the girth estimate directly in front of the dorsal fin, mm -hmm. you get a good estimate of the, the fork length. So you don't have to take the fish out of the water. In fact, we recommend keeping the fish in the water. It's better for you and the fish. You know, you don't want to be blowing a giant fish, have a flop around your deck and break your console and all that. Mm -hmm. But if you get those, you get those estimates, keep the fish in the water. And then this little, um, little like slide rule kind of figure here at the bottom here. So if you know the fork length in inches is on the X axis down here, and then over here in the, the Y axis over to the left is a dorsal girth. So right in front of that dorsal fin, the girth in inches. So meaning I'm gonna give an example here. If you have a, uh, if it's fork length of 60 inches, but a girth is 40, you can kind of follow it up here. And that's about a hundred, a little bit shy of 110 pound fish. So each line here is, is the weight. Okay. So to another example, if you have a, I guess 70, uh, 70 inches fork length, and then you go up to uh, 30 inches. Um, oh, I'm falling over in the Y axis here. It mm -hmm. kind of crosses here at that hundred pounds. So that's about a hundred pound fish with 70 inches fork length and um, 30 inches girth. Okay. And then also the stress as I, you know, fork length is from, you know, the tip of the snout to the fork of the tail. So not the total length, but the, the fork length mm -hmm. of, of the fish. Okay. So, and I gave you this time and I can, I can, but anyway, if you could post this on your website, maybe yeah. but there's a link to this. So you can, you know, me at the podcast, you can also click on this. You can print it out and bring it. In fact, I have a copy of it in my tackle box. Just yeah. you know, that way you have it. Right. Yeah. So, and that way you don't have to do that crazy equation that's above this. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's accurate, but it's brutal. Yeah. So <laughs> what we're looking at is, is, basically a, a little graph and it, all you got to know is the is the fork length and the the girth and then you can use this chart to get a determination of the weight of the fish based upon this complicated equation and you don't have to do that so this will be available in the show notes you can go to tomrollandpodcast.com and you can download this little graph laminate it put it in your in your tackle box or your tackle bag and, or your boat and then you'll always have it Sounds good, Tommy. Keep the fish in the water and better for you and the fish. For sure. For <laughs> sure. And and it's really as simple as that, right? That this is this is it. You just use this little this little chart and you are coming up with a much more accurate, uh, up to 15% more accurate measurement of the tarpon's weight. And this is specifically for tarpon, right? Like yep, you yep. wouldn't use this for uh even even a fish that would kind of look like like a big kingfish. Do you think that might work better? For I think this kingfish or? is still still kind of that that I know it's elongated, but yeah. it's still kind of more of a football shape. Or tarpon mm -hmm. have what we call a more of an ellipsoid shape, kind right. of like compressed on the side. So I think uh, for kingfish, definitely for bonefish, for um, for tuna, I would use that Woods equation. Yeah, the length times skirt divided by eight hundred for those fish. Okay, so those are two uh, equations that you can use, or one equation and one chart that you can use. Get the estimated weight of the tarpon and uh you know if you are lucky enough to catch one of these fish this season take care of them keep them in the water land them as quickly as possible in my opinion use as heavy a tackle as they will bite and uh land them fast and get them back out there swimming 
All right, Mike, thank you very much for this. This is awesome. And again, you can go to TomRolandPodcast.com, look at the show notes for this episode, and you can download this graph, and you'll have it. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike.